to get rejected, I want them to at least read it on the way to the trash can. So I put my headline right here. <laughs> so I'm like, if it's going in the garbage anyway, read my sales offer, you know. And um, so I'm testing that up. Eventually, this is interesting. I um, I want to get this up to 30 percent, but um, I do have one letter I've written, and there's nothing nothing um, glamorous about it. You put it in an envelope. It's a black and white letter. That thing, I can get, I can get about three responses out of every ten that I mail out. If you think about that, it's pretty amazing, and um, it's, it's, you know, uh, pretty strong. I don't know why that one works so well, but that one. Uh, so you want to test with, you know, different ones you have out there. Um, I encourage all of you to compete against yourself. That is a really strong lesson uh, because, you know, we can talk about conversion rates, and we can talk about bounce rates, and we can talk about all kinds of exciting uh, metrics, but the thing, what really counts at the end of the day is your own. And um, I got to the point where I stopped going to a lot of different marketing groups. I stopped going to a lot of, um, I stopped subscribing to a lot of things like Dan Kennedy letters and Joe Polish, and, and, well, not Joe Polish, but who's the other guy? Joe Vitale. Um, I used to subscribe to all that stuff, and it got to the point where I was becoming a parrot of someone else, and I wanted to kind of stop because I started realizing that some of the things that I was creating on my own um, didn't really mirror anybody else's um, results. That was kind of cool. Then I started becoming exclusive. I started becoming, um, you know, unduplicatable is one of my favorite words. So that's what you want to find out. And um, I, I mentioned up here the swipe file thing. A swipe file, that's just a collection of sales letters that you collect from other people. So like the USA Today thing is a really good example of that. Get like a filing cabinet and just shove all your sales letters in there. And when you're stuck, um, when you're writing a piece, you want to look at, you want to start paying attention to things like, like, um, like how big is the type? You know, is it 60 points? 72 points might be too big. Uh, you want to look at how things go. Um, something I... I, I'm actually kind of blessed with is I, I'm nearsighted, and um, so when I look at something, uh, it, it kind of helps me in a way because I, I notice that my eyes gravitate towards the big headline first. There's pockets of information. If all your type is the same size and you mail it to someone, you're going to confuse people. Or if you don't use bullet points, that's another way to confuse people. A lot of websites are like that. Uh, you'd be surprised. Um, a lot of doctors, a lot of lawyers that I work for, uh, their websites are it's all graphics, either JavaScript, animation, and it's just like 10 point type. You know, you need a magnifying glass to read their, their uh, sales copy. But think about how people read. You want to appeal to emotions. You want things to jump out more than others. And, um, and there's other aesthetics on this tours when you start doing <coughs> web pages because on web pages, uh, I understand that. Uh, actually, Google will actually grade a page uh, differently if it's in bullet points, brackets, uh, certain fonts, certain colors. There's an algorithm for each one. Um, now, don't hold me to this, because this is what I heard from somebody who heard something from Danny Sullivan in uh, Google and uh, some Google convention in New York City last summer. And then when I, when I heard that, I was really kind of surprised, because the sales letters that I do, and the, they're kind of like some of the web pages I've done, that there's a really strong, striking similarity. And um, the reason why a lot of my sales sites are jacked up high is because they've got the right pieces in them. So that's kind of cool. Um, and um, keep it real, whatever it is. You know, realism is, is really great. Um, I'm also talking here about, about video, too. I leave my mistakes in all my videos. I leave all my ums and all my pauses. And uh, if I stumble over a word, if I mispronounce something, I leave it in because people like to buy from people. They like to buy from real people. If it's too slicked up, if it's too um, too perfect, you know, that's what infomercials are for. Uh, and those are expensive. And most people can't afford those uh, to do a, a, a thing like that. So keep in mind that when you work on the web, it's a different medium. And I've tested this out. And I always find that my, my videos, with all the mistakes and things in them, that um, you know, that people will watch those. It's more of a believability factor. And uh, so it's not Hollywood at all. And when you work like this, you're really creating relationships and you're building trust. That's really, really important to, to mention because I think when you write your own sales copy, it's kind of like, um, it's really hard to get that authenticity uh, if you get like a prepackaged brochure that's slipped over and glossed over. Um, it's amazing too that people don't even read those. <laughs> I used to give people brochures and they look at them and just go like, 
Looks like everything else I've seen today. But when you give them something like this, and I'm really talking about a certain condition, that I can help them in some way, but no matter what I'm selling, then it gets really more interesting. And then they think you really care about them too, which is really kind of a cool thing to have. You, know, you start getting people on your side. And um, now, as we start to build this, I'm going to talk about building circles of influence. And I think that's something that is really, really important. How many people in here have a mind map? I see. Now, nah, my glasses on. Anybody? Mind map. Anybody? Okay, a couple people. Good. Wow. You got me too? Okay, so three people. Um, this will save your life, folks. Seriously. A mind map is really amazing. What it is, is if you've never seen this before, you, you want to write this down. You can get a mind map software. It's free. A lot of, um, a lot of companies on, online have this software, and you can run it. The way it basically works is that, let's say, for example, I'm doing a thing for my company, Hot Metro Finds. I'm doing, uh, on the middle circle, that would be me. On the purple diamonds, let's say I'm covering restaurants, I'm covering retail stores, I'm also covering um, art galleries. Okay, as I build up my site, as I build up my, my, my business, I'm starting to pick up more, more business. I might have a limo company on there, which I do, and I have a different um, uh, beauty care companies, I get import companies, I have all kinds of different stuff. Where it gets really interesting, and this is kind of funny, I call it the ultimate Facebook, because this is real to me. Um, most of the guys on my Facebook profile page, I don't even know half those people. They want to be friends of mine, I don't know them. Uh, if I want to do business with them, it's almost impossible. Because um, they haven't really built up any rapport with each other. So how could they possibly know who I am? They're just going for the popularity and the numbers. This is real, because now let's say I want to do an art event in an art salon. Who's going to stop me? Because I know the people. I can actually put that together. All I got to do is make a couple phone calls and make that happen. And I, I find myself drawing my network of people more and more. And for doing special projects, all I got to do is crisscross different businesses and, and get things done. It gets really interesting if you've never thought about that. Um, and this is a really great way to kind of plan out, you know, where you're going to go. So this can work in your, in your business life. And I just kind of throw that in there because it's a tool that I use. And I think it's really great. Works for websites too. Okay, so uh, it's okay to quit in this economy. And I say that because growing up in the 80s, I was always, I was always kind of hammered into me. You got to go to college. You got to do this. It's like this whole sequence of events that were really kind of non-related to get to a goal. And then when I found out I was making 40000 that was the ultimate goal. I thought it was a horrible uh, arrangement. <laughs> and, uh, so I was like, you know, that's not good enough for me. Um, so I say to people, now, it's okay to quit. So if you have a product or a service, uh, I don't want you to feel married to it. It's okay to quit and start a new one um, and, and really feel that flexibility. And you've got to really connect your audience. And um, I always found that different industries work differently because I'm in a lot of different stuff, real estate, mortgages. Um, I, I've done some stuff for like colonics and some center, alternative healthcare, um, massage and, and acupuncture. I've done stuff for automotive, um, beauty supply products, um, German pedicure equipment, you'll figure that one out. Um, and I always found that.